What's up guys, I'm CJR and these are my first impressions of the Nintendo Switch. Alright guys, it's finally here. The Nintendo Switch has arrived. Uh, very anticipated console. Um, hopefully all of you are able to get your hands on one. I feel like Nintendo did a pretty good job of actually getting a whole lot of units out into the uh, public. So, um, like I said, hopefully you guys were able to get your hands on one. Let me know in the comments below how your launch experience was, if you were able to pick one up, pre-order one, however that went. Uh, let me know, I'm interested to hear. Um, Gamer Alley and I, Matt, Picked these up at a local game store called Microplay. Uh, they did a midnight launch, so we waited in line for about a half hour and got ours. Unfortunately, while we were in there, their system crashed, so I was a little bit worried that uh, we waited in line for no reason. But they finally figured out. We came back here and we did a little stream unboxing, uh, went through some of the games. So you can find that video in the cards above or at the end of the video, you'll see a link. Um, so the Nintendo Switch. I am quite happy with it. I've mentioned before that I view this console as a handheld console. This to me is Nintendo's follow-up to the 3DS. I mentioned in an early video that it might be smart for Nintendo to uh, stop production of the 3DS and to focus development on the Switch. Uh, there was a lot of interesting comments on that video. Uh, the 3DS has been out for six years and uh, it's definitely approaching the end of its lifetime, and I think if this takes off, you're gonna see uh, them, Nintendo, stop production of the 3DS. If it doesn't do well, you can probably expect, expect a 3DS successor. My point being, I haven't played this, other than the first, uh, when, when Matt and I got it and we did our little stream, that's the only time it's been hooked up to my TV. I've been playing it strictly as a handheld, and that's how I'm gonna continue to play it. There will be the odd time, mostly when I stream games, that I'll hook it up to the TV, but I can tell you right now, safely, it's gonna spend 90% of the time in um, portable mode. Because as I said, it's to me, this is a portable system with the ability to also play it on TV. And if I look at it that way, it actually looks like a much better system to me. I guess first thing I'll mention is uh, build quality. I'm really, really happy with the build quality. I've heard this in other reviews, but it feels like a nice quality piece of technology. Um, it's well made. The one thing I do worry about so far, it feels like there's a fan in here. Like I, when I'm holding it, I can feel like cool air coming out. So I don't know if there's a fan in there, it's whisper quiet. Uh, the thing I do worry about is there's some like grates up here or um, vents. I worry about stuff getting in there. Like, and, and you're having like a rattle at some point and not being able to get stuff out of there because there's quite a bit of room in those vents. So uh, that's one thing I worry about. But other than that, uh, another concern that people said was the uh, kickstand. I don't know how much people are actually gonna use that kickstand, but it's more than adequate for the amount that people would use it. There was a over-exaggerated CNET video where they were shaking it and pushing it over, and it's 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 fine, kickstand's fine. For the amount that you're gonna be using it, it serves its purpose. Um, the Joy-Con, so I watched Last Gamer on uh, YouTube, his video, and he was very, um, well, not very, he's pretty negative about the Switch. Actually, I just saw another video. He he was critical of the Nintendo Switch. And uh, Nintendo actually pulled his video down and gave him a copyright strike because he showed a little bit of footage in it. So pretty shady that that happened. But uh, he was saying that he was concerned about the f amount of flex in the between the Joy-Cons and the uh, system itself. I don't see it. I'm, I'm actually pretty uh, pleasantly surprised with how sturdy these are. And I think it would take a lot of force and a pretty uh, severe drop to uh, have that break. So there is some issues with the Joy-Con, what do they call those? The Joy-Con straps. There's a little plastic piece that slides onto the Joy-Con. Um, I'll quickly mention, it does take a little bit of um, practice once you do it a couple times of getting these off properly. But like I said, once you go through it a few times, you get better and better at sliding them off and on. Uh, there is a bit of an issue with the Joy-Con grips um, or the uh, Joy-Con straps. When it slides on, it can be actually quite tough to pull that off. And I've seen um, one video, a uh, girl that I watch on YouTube, Sons Bookish Games, actually was filming an unboxing and she could not get it off. And you can tell she was almost at the point of like tears because she was so frustrated. She could not pull it off. And I think she eventually actually broke it. So 
Um, that's a bit of an issue, um, but like anything, it's just repetition. You get better at, and better at taking them off. So not a huge deal to me. Um, the Joy-Cons themselves, um, I've got very large hands. I'm a pretty big person in general. Uh, they're fine. I mean, I mean, it's not ideal. Definitely not ideal, but I'm, I wasn't expecting ideal. I knew that this would be a little bit awkward, but for the purpose that it serves, of being able to prop up your system and you know if Andrew and I want to play a little bit of snipper clips you know in my bed before he goes to sleep uh, we can sit there prop up the screen and you know comfortably uh, kind of comfortably for me play some snipper clips on these little controllers when you add the the strap on it adds a little bit of uh, size and girth to it so that helps a bit it's not ideal um, but it's doable and uh, it serves the purpose of being able to play um, in this mode I don't know if it would if I would sit here and play on the TV with these uh, that's why I got the pro controller the pro controller I can't really speak on too much I, I love the feel of it it feels really nice feels like a nice quality product Still too expensive. Uh, that's a general theme with everything with the Switch. Too expensive. Uh, if I was going to play in TV mode, which I don't plan on doing a whole lot, I'd be using the Pro Controller. So my point is the Joy-Cons serve their purpose for the type of gaming that you'd be doing. Uh, one, two Switch, they work fine. Uh, but like I said, not ideal. But uh, again, I think of all this stuff, this is the console to me. This is the handheld. Um, it's a little bit larger than a Vita, quite a bit larger than a Vita. It's quite wide, but this is this is the Switch to me. So anything it does beyond this, to me, is a bonus. Uh, like being able to use the Joy-Cons, being able to play it on your TV. So the screen itself is absolutely gorgeous. And I had heard things, uh, good things about it in, in, in other reviews. Um, it's only a 720p, but you really don't notice that it's it's really nice the, the the screen is super crisp colorful it's great uh the bezel i thought might be an issue uh, but it's just something that you get used to very very quickly moving into software software on this like the the os the operating system i'm very very impressed with uh super minimalist but extremely easy to navigate i'm um, really impressed with all the little sounds they've got those nintendo does great uh, menu music and sounds. They're, they're fantastic at that. Um, case in point, this one, that sound right there. I don't know if you, okay, I'm gonna do it again. This is my favorite sound on the Nintendo Switch so far. I love that. So just little things like that are, are amazing. Um, the games are easily accessible. You can see them all spread out across the, uh, um, I don't know what menu bar here. And then they've got the icons below. It's, it's super easy to navigate. Um, Really impressed. I use the dark theme. You can also do the white theme. Expect Nintendo to come out with a whole bunch of themes that you probably have to pay for. Uh, but super easy to navigate. Very impressed with this. Uh, friends. Finding friends. You're still using friend codes. Unfortunately, you can't search somebody. Uh, so you guys cannot search CJR. Um, I will mention, I'll put my friend code at in the description. And uh, let me see. I'll post it uh, right here. Feel free to... Um, follow me, be a friend, send me a friend request on the Switch. A lot of you have done so already. Um, I love the fact that you can have multiple profiles. So I have my CJR's page here and then Tina's page, my wife. So we can go into Tina's page or, or sign into Tina's account. Basically, okay, I'm going to start up Zelda here. And once you do that, it gives you the option of, it asks you what user you want to use. So now I can actually let my wife play it and it will save a separate save game to her. So she won't mess up my save files because it's under her name and it doesn't save to the cartridge, which is absolutely amazing. I think I can actually lend my cartridge to Gamer Alley if, if he wanted to and he could play because it's under his profile. I could be wrong on that, but I'm assuming that's how it works. I tested it quickly. I fired up my wife's account and it started the game as though it hadn't been played yet. So let me know in the comments below. I hope I'm right about that. If, if that's so, that's an amazing feature. I'm really happy about that. Uh, let me see. Games that I've played. Okay, I've played Zelda. Um, I'll quickly start, talk about that. Zelda's the only game that I bought physically. I talked myself out of 1-2 Switch. Bomberman to me was a complete ripoff. I think that's... I mentioned before, I think Bomberman's like a $20, $15 downloadable game. I just can't pay that much. I... I I played Bomberman and I would love to have it right now. 
and be playing it. It looks like a lot of fun and it was a lot of fun, the bit that uh, Matt and I played, uh, but I can't justify spending that much money on it. I just don't think it's quite worth it. So Matt has those games. Matt has uh, Bomberman and 1-2 Switch. So I played a bit with him that night and the next morning. So I have some experience with them. Maybe I'll borrow them from him and uh, play a little bit of 1-2 Switch. My wife and Matt were playing some 1-2 Switch. It's pretty fun. 1-2 uh, Switch would be the second game that I would buy, but I also cancelled that just because I put... We played it for about an hour and I almost feel like I once you play all the games that uh, there's not a whole lot of replay value. So uh, Zelda is the only game I've put significant time into, probably three hours now. Um, it's fantastic. Uh, I'm playing it strictly on the uh, Switch in portable mode, like I said. And it looks fantastic. It looks great. I haven't noticed many graphical hiccups. A little bit of pop in, a little bit of uh, frame rate drop, but nothing bad at all. It's it looks fantastic. Um, I I personally love the uh, kind of shell sta cell shaded art style. Um, abilities are fantastic. Uh, they've given you a whole bunch of what are they called runes ruin runes. So you can uh, have all these special abilities. Basically, you start off on a plateau. Uh, the one thing I think about open world games is sometimes they can be a little bit overwhelming for me because I'm not sure where to go. Uh, this game is doing actually a really good um, job of, uh, of guiding me at first or at least telling me the mechanics of the game to look for the towers, the shrines, and then almost forcing you to do a couple shrines to see how they work. Uh, the shrines are like introductions to how to use your runes throughout the game, so that's great. Um, it, it really start the game starts really well. Uh, you're on a, a plateau, so you're only in a specific area, uh, a relatively small area for the first, I don't know, hour or two of the game until you get this little paraglider thing so you can actually leave this area. So you're confined to a smaller area, It's so it's not super overwhelming when you first start. Uh, uh, music, graphics, uh, there's actual voice acting in this. It's not all text, it's a lot of text, but uh, there's actually some voice acting. The cutscenes are great. Stories shaping up pretty well. Um, I'm pretty sure it got like straight tens from everybody. Uh, I have kind of like a mixed history with Zeldas. Uh, I haven't beat a whole lot of them. I've beat uh, several of the DS and uh, 3DS ones, but um, the last couple that have been out uh, in the last few generations, I haven't actually finished. Uh, I do that typically with open world games. Well, not that those were that open world, but um, I tend to not finish open world games so much, but uh, I really think I'm gonna finish this. The problem is Horizon. So uh, Horizon's now on the back burner and I'm focusing on this. So I really wanted to play through Horizon. I got like, I think 10 hours into Horizon. So it's gonna be between this and Horizon. And then now Ghost Recon Wildlands is coming out. I really wish, I really wish Horizon could have come out even a week earlier. So I would have had another full week to play it before this came out, but. Zelda's fantastic. You need to buy it, even if you're not, even if you're not a traditional Zelda fan. This is not necessarily a traditional Zelda game. It's open world. Uh, it's got a, a whole diff bunch of different uh, mechanics. It's it's like a mix of a whole bunch of good games into one, like Skyrim. Uh, it's it's good. It's it's been a lot of fun. Uh, what else do I need to talk about here? Snipper clips. A lot of fun. Played with Matt. Um, I, I haven't had a chance to play with Andrew, but I think that's something that him and I will enjoy. Um, you can actually download a demo. I don't know if you can see that. You can download a demo of Snipper Clips and play that. Uh, it's like $30 here in Canada, which I feel like is a bit too expensive. Uh, I picked up Fast RMX, really enjoying that. Super uh, high sense of speed in that game. It's a little bit like um, the Wipeout series for me. It takes me a little while to get used to the controls. I'm pretty bad at first, but after I played for about an hour, I started to get the hang of it and it was a lot of fun. So I would recommend Fast RMX. Uh, what else have I played? Super Bomberman R, pretty standard Bomberman, like what is it, isometric view, 3D graphics. It, it was a lot of fun. Matt and I played in uh, like tabletop mode with the Joy-Cons. It was a little bit tough to do on the Joy-Cons. You need, for Bomberman, you kind of need a D-pad in my opinion. It's hard to have precise movements with the analog stick, so. Um, I should mention that you can actually set up separate accounts for different uh, eShops. So you can set up like an, a Japanese account and actually download games from, and download and play games from the Japanese store. There is a couple issues with, um, I don't think the credit cards work, so if you buy a points card, you can sign up for an account with the Japanese eShop and use a points card and buy stuff from the Japanese store. So hopefully that's not a, 
um, mistake by Nintendo, and hopefully they'll keep that feature in there. So, uh, let me think. What else here can I tell you? Uh, so I actually was gonna buy an extra set of uh, Joy Cons. I talked myself out of that. I was actually also gonna buy a Joy Con charging grip. Also talked myself out of that. Uh, I don't think it's that necessary. These Joy-Cons hold like something like 30 hours of battery life and because I play it in this mode most of the time it's they're on here charging most of the time so if I want to slide them on to the Joy-Con grip um, that's not a, not too hard for me to do because they're typically always holding a charge so just want to quickly show you guys the Joy-Con what is this Joy-Con grip controller Joy-Con controller I Still getting used with, to all the terminology here. Um, I'll speak on this real quick. This is not bad. It's okay. Uh, I was really hoping it would feel like a Dreamcast controller just because of the close proximity and stuff. It's not really like a Dreamcast controller, but it's not bad. Again, I'm, my expectations were low for this stuff. This is just like an add-on to me that uh, you can play. Let me say that you can totally, you can comfortably play Zelda with this. I've tried Zelda in a little bit of tabletop mode with this controller and it's totally fine. It's it's comfortable, it's not ideal. So, and I think it actually looks really cool with the neon, with the colors in this one. Almost like racing stripes kind of. Anyways guys, that's it for some quick first impressions of the Nintendo Switch. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. If you were able to get one, uh, what color you went with, and uh, what you're playing and what your initial impressions of it are. I'm I'm pretty happy with the system. Um, it's, it's a portable system to me, and I think it's the best portable system ever made. Uh, slightly above, of, above the uh, PS Vita, hardware-wise, I should say. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Like I said, feel free to um, add me, friend me. My friend code is in the description below. And uh, feel free to find me anywhere on social media, Instagram, Facebook, at CJR. And until the next episode.